Uh, good evening again. Uh, so my name is Thomas. I've uh, been working in research in a big data platform engineering team for more than two years now. And actually, since the day I started my career in engineering research, I also picked up on, on Ansible. Uh, I wanted to give some basic introduction, like what am I doing here? Because normally I would be on the other side uh, uh, during, during the meetup. I had a couple of those uh, as a member of the audience. That uh, opportunity has uh, risen to, for me to, to give this talk. Uh, so one of my uh, annual objectives for the last for my for the last year was to write an article or to publish a Jim research blog about anything, actually almost nearly anything I, I wish, which I do at work. Uh, and I went to Ansible because I know Ansible. We use it uh, on a daily basis in our company and especially. Uh, in our team, and I know it quite well. Of course, I'm not an expert. I'm probably just an Ansible engineer, as many of you are. Uh, but during those two plus years, I've gained some experience. Uh, I just wanted to share a couple of tips and tricks uh, that I've learned throughout those two years. So the link to the article uh, is in here at the top. This slide, just this part of the slide, just. Uh, resembles my difficult beginnings of Ansible. So, so before switching from my previous company to, to G-Research, I started uh, learning Ansible on my own for online courses, which there's plenty of uh, available uh, online. When I had a problem, I went to Stack Overflow, and I tried to persuade the community, community that Ansible might be actually broken. It's not actually working as a design team. Uh, I asked a question that apparently gave me uh, the highest reputation from all of my questions from Stack Overflow. And I discussed with this guy in a very polite manner. Uh, you can see his reputation is over 45k at that time. But of course he was right, I was mistaken. Uh, nearly two years later I told this reply that uh, actually I'm ashamed of asking this question. It was downvoted, but it's not that bad because you can see 11 people had the same issue. I had. So uh, there's some use of, of this question in my early, early uh, beginning to come through. So I wanted to share this talk with you, show a couple of tips, a couple, couple of tricks I've picked up. And all those are actually based on real life events, real life, real, real problems I or my colleagues experienced uh, uh, throughout my time in, in, in GeoSearch. All right, so let's see how it goes. Uh, First thing I wanted to, to talk about is uh, storing secrets in Ansible and how to do it in a, let's say, flawless way. It's very, 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 how to, how to create a, a piece of a code which you can paste directly into your, into your playbook without much hassle. So we all know that uh, Ansible supports Vault. We have Ansible Vault, which, can, which was originally designed to encrypt the whole file so you can store your secrets. But I think later on in the subsequent versions, uh, Ansible added the variable level encryption. So we can have a plain text playbook, and inside the playbook, we can have sections of the code with encrypted secrets like so. So we have a variable called password, and the value of the password is stored in, in, in Vault, uh, which, which you can see. And we do use it a lot. We, we store a lot of secrets like that. Uh, mostly, uh, mostly because we have a lot of applications talking between each other, authenticating between each other, and we do not need to know those passwords. No one will ever type them in manually. This is just one app authenticating against another app. So we, we store the password in, in the code. Whenever we need to rotate it, we would change the, uh, the, the vault and just run the playbook, but we don't need to know this password. So of course, to, to get this playbook running, you, you need to pass the as vault Askable pass option, and we need to know the whole password because the Ansible playbook will ask you uh, for the vote. So, like I said, we don't need to know the secret. Uh, so, the problem I had is how to quickly generate such a piece of a code, such a code block, uh, without knowing the password, just one comment, and uh, how to do it very easily. So, my first attempt was this. We basically ran Ansible vault with an option of encrypt string, uh, which as the name implies, it encrypts the string. Minus n is the name of the string will be password. And then the value is, because I wanted to have a randomized password, I use pwgen, uh, which 
in this case, generates one password with 10 random uh, characters. So at this point, I was supposed to do a quick demo, but because I cannot connect to my workstation, I'll just explain what it was about. So this command will work. It, it will be perfectly fine, but there's one but about it. Uh, I would say from a security point of view. Do you know what, what it is? So the password will end up in audit.log. And this was pointed to, to me by my boss uh, when I was writing my uh, when I was writing, writing my blog article. And actually, of course, he was right. So if you if you run this command like this, it will work. It will produce a nice piece of code which you can paste into to your um, uh, Ansible playbook. But the password will will end up in as you can see. This is the password because the command uh, gets expanded as soon as you press enter. Right. So what you should use. So it's the other way around. Pipe the PW gen, pipe it through to Ansible Vault and comes to minus, minus N and uh, password, and you'll get a nice look like this, which you can copy and paste it directly to your to your player. All right, so that's one of the tip. And like I said, I use it a lot. I use it a lot whenever I need to generate a, a new secret. All right, uh, another, another problem I came across is to how to deal with uh, problematic characters in uh, variable value. So we know that variables are referred in Ansible double curly brackets, or braces, brackets, like so. Uh, what do you do if the value of the variable actually contains double curly brackets for other, let's say, problematic characters, right? Uh, this is another real life uh, example, real life scenario. I was working on uh, the deploying on, of a plugin which had a configuration file, and one of the lines of the configuration file should read exactly like so. So this is not a reference to Ansible variable. It's just the syntax, those triple curly brackets, are just, it's just the syntax of the plugin I was uh, trying to, uh, to configure. So we want this line to appear in our file as is. So what can we do about it? The attempt number one is this. Uh, it actually worked. You can escape the curly brackets with more curly brackets. Uh, it looks nasty, it looks horrible, it doesn't fit in one line on this slide, but it works. But uh, I did some more reading, and it turns out that Ansible <coughs> provides a feature which is, I think is very widely known. I, I didn't know about it when I uh, first came across it. It's, it's called the unsafe tag. So you use this tag in your syntax, and basically what it means, so anything after this tag till the end of the line is treated as just to, as is, as a raw text. Uh, and it doesn't get interpreted as a variable, doesn't get expanded, uh, nothing else. So when you use this, it looks nice, it looks clean, and like I said again, everything till the end of the line from here, from here to till the end of the line, uh, ends up being interpreted directly uh, as, as, as the raw stream. So it turns out that unsafe is uh, one of the YAM tags is in Ansible. And another one is Vault, which you've actually seen earlier, right? In here. So uh, this is where, where it comes from. Uh, just a side note, also, if you want to have a role text in the template file, in the Jinja 2 template, there are also some uh, role string markers row and end row, which you can put directly in the Jinja2 template, which is also uh, useful. So if you want, if you have your J2 tem Jinja2 template file, and if you don't want uh, the templating engine to, 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 to process it to parse and just to the assets. Okay, so that's number two. And last one, last but not least. Uh, this is also, again, real life example, a bit simplified, but we, we actually have this issue, this problem, this, this tiny problem. Uh, so there's a little, little uh, gotcha in the uh, file module of Ansible. Um, the file module allows us to manipulate files and directories on the target, target host. This very simple task creates a file, which is called, uh, which, uh, is called test.txt, lives <coughs> under TMP, and we want uh, the permissions to be set to 400, so the on, only the owner of the file can read it. So is this going to work? Well, of course it's going to work, but we'll end up with this, which this doesn't correspond to this, right? Because this is 400, this is 620, yep. 
So why 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 is this happening? Uh, of course, again, well, it's it's, it's very simple to, to to explain. It's also written in the documentation if you read carefully. So what has happened here? We set the node by four zero zero, and the, the the file module expects the the, the node to be expressed in an octal number. So when we don't provide the leading zero. The, uh, the, file, the file module expands it to an octal notation, which 400, the octal notation is 6 to 0, binary notation is this, and Unix notation is read, write for the, for the owner, write for the group, and nothing for, for, for others. Uh, so we had this problem. Uh, it, uh, it took us a, a while to figure out what was going on. Uh, and this is actually an, an excerpt from the ANSIB documentation. If you go to a file name description and how uh, mode, op ma mode option works, it clearly says this, that you need to ideally prepend it with zero or put the node in, in, in the quotes so it gets interpreted correctly. My, uh, my, my good habit is always to, to, to prepend it with zero, so put mode zero four zero zero, and uh, doing so you won't have any uh, any issues. Like I said, again, that was a real, uh, real life example. I think we had a claim uh, that was deploying certificates uh, on a target host, and we ended up with certificates in the key having two broad permissions, so the application would not run, and it took us some time to, to figure out uh, what was uh, going on. And yeah, I think that's it.